This is Ground Affected. My name is Brent, and welcome to accidentally taking a sip of your paint water. In this video, I want to show you super quickly how you can use translucent resins to create super simple and easy effects on certain characters. And in this case, the character I'm talking about is the Invisible Woman from the Fantastic Four. This is a miniature and this was sculpted by C27 Miniatures and Terrains. I will definitely leave the link for them in the description below. Make sure when you're looking at that to click like, possibly consider giving me a subscriber because for every one more subscriber that I get, I will have one more new subscriber. So for this model, I wanted to try something a little bit different. And what I did was I printed this model in transparent resin. I then used a Vallejo liquid mask to cover up areas I wanted to remain translucent. So I placed this all over the places that I wanted to keep see-through essentially. And once that had fully dried, I started to work on the model itself. For some reason, no one knows why, not even myself. I started to paint the face and I painted the base layer of skin tones over the face and then realized I still needed to paint a really large dark area of black just after that. Essentially, you never want to do direct black because it will never read as black. It will just look really dark and you'll have no shadows. So the best thing to combat this is to mix a little bit of blue or red, depending on the kind of black you're looking for. If you want a warmer black, you may want to go with more reds or yellows to create a bit more warmth in the color. If you want a cooler color, then you want to go with a blue or a green mixed into your black. This will give you a dark gray, but it will still read as black. In order to highlight this, I'm going to use quite a bright blue and I'm going to spray this from the highlighted areas, essentially all the areas where the light would be hitting the model. To base coat the hair, I give it a solid base coat with charred bone. This is going to give me the base colors for a blonde haired looking person. Usually with colors like this, you probably have to do two or three layers. So don't feel bad when your first layer doesn't look perfect. This usually means you just need to add a second and possibly a third layer, especially on the base coats. I painted white into the center of the symbol. This was in order to set it up for later on. I then came back with crystal blue and I painted all the accented pieces, for example, her belt, that little thing that goes around her neck and her hand, as well as the symbol on her chest. This is an area you need to be a lot more careful. This is the time that you need to make sure you don't paint outside the lines because if you do, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to come back and clean that up later on, especially since you've painted with airbrush underneath that. I carefully map out all the parts on the suit, specifically paying careful attention to the logo, but using the edge of my brush is the easiest way to catch these details without having to be too precise. On the base, I'm going to start off by creating a warmer grey. This is essentially going to be made by mixing a bit of yellow or sort of parchment yellow kind of colour that is a lot warmer to look at. I'm then going to dry brush all those areas and I'm going to make sure I bring out a lot of the highlights on the rock. As you can tell this desaturates it quite a bit but I'm going to tie that back in by using a cooler color to shade in certain areas. What this is going to do is it will contrast against the warmer color that I'd placed underneath that and help give a little bit more life to this piece of rock that this lady will be standing on. Unfortunately, I forgot to record most of this section, but I used pigment powders to accentuate some of that. This being a reddish color is the contrast to the cool color that I placed over the top by adding the blue. I also used grass tufts to add a little bit more texture to the base and just bring a little bit more interest into something that otherwise is just a rock. I also feel very much that I need to paint the bottoms of my models. You don't have to do this, but in my opinion, I like to make sure that they are solidly painted. It just looks a little bit more complete and I am happier knowing that all my models are sitting on the shelf with a solid paint coat underneath them. Now in order to create a bit of shadows in the hair, I'm going to take Seraphim Sepia and I'm going to spray this 
very carefully from the bottom of the shadowed areas on the hair itself. For this kind of action, what I would do with my airbrush is I'd turn the pressure down quite a lot, almost really, really low. It'll feel like the airbrush isn't doing much. If it was any lower, it would spit. You wanna kind of go just above the point where it's spitting. This is gonna be different. I can't give you a number for this because everybody's airbrush and everybody's paints will be different depending on how you've thinned your paint. So I can't give you an exact number just until it stops spitting and it's just gently spraying a very, very light coat of paint. That's where you want the airbrush for that. Now that I've spoken a whole load of crap and you missed out on a load of stuff, I'm gonna take off this mask and you're gonna see kind of the effect that we're already going for. This mask is perhaps not the best way of doing this. In hindsight, I do feel like I maybe could have gotten away with actually airbrushing the edges of this. It would give a slightly smoother look and perhaps look more like it's actually turning into invisible rather than just a solid area of like it's invisible and it's not invisible. But in order to combat this look, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a very light blue and I'm gonna paint around the edge of that hardened edge. This is not the ideal way of doing it, but looking at it now, this is probably the easiest way for a beginner or someone who is not so confident in creating these kind of effects. You could definitely get away with doing this super easily, minimal effort, it looks great, and you didn't even have to try too hard. For the skin tones, I'm gonna paint slowly and gradually, I'm gonna build up highlights on the skin tones. It's extremely difficult on a small model like this to create a good gradient because there isn't much space between the time you have to put your brush down and the time you have to lift it up. But if you just persevere, make sure to use thin coats. Try not to add way too many layers, especially after another layer hasn't dried fully because this will end up causing chunks on the piece. To highlight the hair, I'm gonna use bleached bone and I'm gonna paint this very, very carefully just on the edges of the hair where I want it to look like it's highlighted. I added more highlights to the face as I was working and I used Reichland Flesh Shade to come in and kind of darken certain areas in the hair, around the chin, maybe the sides of the hair where it meets the face, also the center line of the hair as well. I also added a little bit of grimoire purple just to bring a bit more flush back to the cheeks. I then used the resin from the vat and painted a very thin layer over the clear parts of the model and cured this to make it look ultra translucent. A couple of finishing touches and I called it good. Hopefully there was something in this video that may help you with your 3D printing and painting projects in the future. Now we are at the part of the video where I do need to say a super special thank you to my patrons, those that support me and help keep these lights blinding my eyeballs. And this week we managed to get a couple new patrons who I would like to thank personally. Bart Mays and Fabrizio Fuentes. <laughs> I've definitely butchered both of those names, so please don't be upset with me, but thank you so much for your support. Hopefully you've already connected your Discord to your Patreon on your computer so you can be involved in the best group of printers and painters that ever did exist upon the internet. Of course, if you would like to support and you don't want to spend any money, the best thing you can do is like the video, share it with your gran, click the subscribe button, and watch the next video suggested to you by YouTube from my channel. But if the video is not enough for you, then the best thing you can do for yourself is just click dislike, man, and f off. <laughs>